So this is another one of those weird concepts that I saw and decided to make in Kerbal Space Program. This is the work in progress version 1, which is mostly complete. I don't remember what changed, other than adding some control surfaces. And then, of course, we have the final version. And, oh yeah, I, I put these little reversed air brakes on here, which, yes, their authority limiter is set very high. And we also have a regular air brake up here, like an actual air brake, and stuff. So... This is, like I said, this is the NACA 16 slash 18, or maybe I didn't say that. In any case, apparently it's based on a concept NASA plane, or NACA slash NASA, because it's a concept from way back when NASA was NACA. And, um, is that right? I don't remember now. I said that, and then I immediately was like, wait, was that a thing, or is my brain derping? In any case, it's got a very strange look to it, and it's, uh little bit little bit weird a little bit yeah just a little bit weird giant turbofan on a small plane in fact most of the plane is in that giant turbofan but yeah just kind of a weird design there's not all that much else to say about it it's just a weird design i believe i have an action group set up to re thrust reverse that main engine yep it's on thrust on uh, action group one i accidentally activated it while we were on the ground but uh, yeah, because it is one big turbofan, they do take a little while to spool up. So as you can see, we're taking a little while to get speed. Although, this thing can fly at a pretty low speed. And uh, as you can also see, it has a pretty good maneuverability that is until you completely stall it, like I just did. Which is not good, and we may or may not crash right now. So, now nah, we got enough speed. We're going to be fine. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Don't attempt a loop with this design right after you take off. Maybe a little bit down the runway. Yeah, we're going to be able to pull through this loop. Barely, barely able to pull through it. Mostly able to pull through it since uh, it starts falling before you finish pulling through it. For some reason, my game right now, I don't know what it is, but the frame rate goes to hell when I'm inside the cockpit. And that that's annoying. And I noticed this was happening in KSP 1.2.1. And, yeah, there's that other plane. That That's my, uh, whatchamacallit. I can't remember what I called it off the top of my head, but... Ooh, excuse me. The XO2. Yeah, it's the XO2, the, the one from Ace Combat that I kind of want to make another video of. But uh, I also kind of want to wait for some of the bugs present in BD Armory continued to be fixed in 1.2. Oh, God, I overrolled. I overrolled, and it's the death of us. So, let's fly this around now, for no reason. Then, because we can... Oops, I almost was going to tap the engines on the ground. We don't want that, obviously. But, uh, yeah, you can see this one. We're, we're out of weapons, pretty much. We're not entirely out of weapons, because we do have... Is it this button? Yep, we do have this button. Oh, good, I can aim with the... Fuck, we're going to crash. It had two Vulcan turrets on it. But now it's dead. In any case... The NACA 16 slash 18, buy yours today, or something. I'm going to take off with this again, and I'm going to time warp just a bit to get us going out a bit. And uh, as you can see, it can get to some pretty good speeds on its own, even though it is just a turbofan. It is a turbofan that, uh, well, it's flying a very small mass. In fact, we're about to go faster than the speed of sound. I forgot exactly how fast this thing could go. I don't remember. So yeah, this thing can go surprisingly fast. And of course, like I said, it has air brakes on it, so we can slow it down quite a bit. Although, uh, right now I'm curious in what kind of speed it's going to get to at low altitude like this. Little bit unstable. That's kind of on purpose with the anhedral wings, but it's balanced a little bit by the dihedral wings. And then, of course, we have flat wings in the front, which are, oh yeah, so they're massively clipped. To make this as short as possible. It's, um, in fact, no, it's not to make this as short as possible. The length of this was defined by how it was attached here, and then this was positioned so that it would fit. It barely fits, and it was positioned so that it would fit. And it looks like our engine is actually overheating, or at least in danger of overheating. So that's interesting. I'm curious what happens if I pull up really hard at this uh, speed, at this altitude right now. That's basically what I expected. Um, more of the plane survived than I thought would. Is this... Oh, intake air deprived. Yeah, because we lost our intake on the front. Oh yeah, so this has an intake on the front. Um, 
Yeah, I was going to say. But it's occluded by the fuselage, so it doesn't do anything. Because why we have the one on the front, or rather, why we normally have the one on the front, but now we don't, because this thing did not go very well just now. But uh, I'm going to attempt to glide it to the island runway. I don't think I'll make it, but I'm going to attempt to glide it to the island runway. We got about... 2.8 kilometers to work with at a speed of 90 meters per second. Let's do the math on that. Oh dear, let's not lose too much more speed. So let's get the uh, glide slope back down. Oops. Uh, that's too low. We want to glide it about this right here. Maybe slightly less. All right. So uh, two two kilometers vertically, and we're going about 90 meters per second that way. Uh, actually, we might be able to, yeah, we should actually be able to land this. So, yeah, it's a good thing uh, it has a good glide capability by accident. Yeah, we also ripped off, oh, excuse me, ripped off part of the uh, design there. Are these, I'm pretty sure, two things. One thing, this is supposed to be touching that. I know that. And for another thing, I'm pretty sure there was, like, an end cap here. I don't remember, actually. I'll have to look at that once we get back on the ground and get to a version that's not horribly busted. But um, in any case, uh, you know, it's going to be close as to whether we can land it or not. Uh, the, the difficult part is going to be turning to land. And also I just noticed, so we have this little vertical stabilizer here. It was broken on the other side. And uh, we lost, yeah, both of our air brakes on the back here, these smaller ones. Not the, uh, not the main one, fortunately. But, uh, oops, come on. There we go. Oh, yes, our speed, of course, is decreasing as we get to lower altitude because thicker air, more drag. I was kind of wondering for a moment why my speed was decreasing, and then I remembered physics. That's why. But uh, in any case, it actually looks like we're uh, pleasantly going to be able to land this, uh, assuming that uh, I'm able to control it well enough to turn and land, which I'm not 100% certain I will be, uh, that I will be able to do that because... Uh, I am not confident of my skills of flying this plane because I haven't flown it very much. But in any case, I'm going to wait till we're a little lower, and then I'm going to deploy the landing gear. And then, of course, uh, of course, I said that I, I did it pretty much immediately after I said that. But uh, yeah, and then we're going to have to do a quick turn here. And there's only one chance to get this right. We can't just fly around if I mess it up. Of course, if I mess it up, most likely we will crash horribly. But uh, that's beside the point. All right, our stalling speed is like 30 or 40 meters per second. We're coming down pretty fast, actually. So there we go, touchdown. And uh, now we just gotta wait for the brakes to actually slow us down. I should turn down the throttle. I just realized I had the throttle all the way up that whole time, even though obviously it wasn't doing anything. But yeah, there we go. And then the one other thing I wanted to demonstrate with this design Let's see if we can get off the ground pretty quickly and easily here. Oops. Yeah, flying at three times time acceleration, not necessarily a good thing. All right, so I'm going to turn this way, do a little bit of a roll. It's fairly maneuverable considering what it is. You wouldn't think it should be that maneuverable, but it is. And uh, now I'm going to activate the thrust reverser while we're flying, which is, of course, going to go badly for the flying part of flying. So as you can see, we're coming down very very quickly and mm. so my main point of demonstration there was to be that uh with that is really crazy how that how that flexed but didn't break break yeah it's still attack i don't have kerbal crash system installed i don't know i don't think it's been updated for this version yet but this i mean this is fully attached still but it's deformed that's crazy well, in any case, um, yeah, that is actually deformed. What? Did they add some sort of deformation mechanic? I swear to God, that's that's not in any patch notes that I know of. That is weird. Well, in any case, uh, you can crash land relatively safely with the thrust reverser on if you have power to the engine. So, that's a thing. Anyhow, thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you in space.